Hello and welcome to my second tutorial in Lightroom. Today we will be editing uh, a landscape uh, with a nice leading line uh, as the road. Uh, this shot been taken in Iceland a few years ago and let's see what we can transform it to. So first of all we can see that there is a destruction in, in this lower corner and Let's crop it out. So, something like that. And I like to have the leading lines going out from a corner. So, I think this can be perfect. And next would be to start and doing the basic edits. Um, so the temperature is pretty balanced, um, the sky tend to be bluish and the ground uh, way more warmer and I think I will just drop the exposure a bit so that I can pop out all the bright stuff later on in local adjustments and Let's drop highlights all the way so that we can get some details from the sky. And this is the before and this is the after. And you can see already a very nice impact. And there's a bit of overexposure. It's not actually overexposured because we have no clipping at all actually. In the histogram, but let's drop a little bit the whites. Yeah, and I want to bring back some contrast back, so let's drop blacks a little bit. Yeah, and you can see nicely how the blacks uh, kick in in this area, for example. So it's nice, it's contrasty, and this leads to layers and depth to our frame. Uh, next would be adjusting the curves, and I always use my smooth transition um, curve. And in this particular shot, it does a lot. But again, you can see it's mainly in the shadows where it's ramping up the blacks so that it's more smooth. And also, you can see it up here in the other uh, extreme of the whites that it drops it a little bit and make it more velvety. Nice. Um, I'm not going to do any type of color uh, correction in HSL today. I do want to have some color grading so I will start with the shadows and as usual the shadows that I want should be bluish. Yeah but this is too much so let's drop it a little bit something like that and we can already see a very nice impact in this area and on the road itself that it's cooling it down yeah and I don't think I need to do anything in the highlights but let's see no. No, I, I don't like it. I'm going to keep it as is. With the details, my usual stuff, I hold the option key and then starting to crank up the mask so that I only sharpen things that I really need to. And there's many the road and maybe a little bit from the background in here which is nice, it's highlighted very very nicely here. 
and I usually end up around 80. It is very very common for me to find it that this is the right number and this is no exception. So what we do by masking out is that we don't want to sharpen any parts that are not important so that we also reduce the noise in the overall frame. Next is usually remove chromatic aberration and we don't do any transform today and no effects and no calibration as well. Um, the colors are pretty nicely set so no calibration. Okay next would be to do some spot uh, removals. We are going to handle the yellow bars, yellow poles, how you call this in English. And uh, I'm going to remove them in Photoshop actually. And actually not all of them, but actually only this one and this one, because these are the two that are distracting um, the eye. The other ones actually are contributing to the leading of the road, the leading eye. I do don't like this shiny stuff over there. It's very, very mild and small, but uh, let's uh, just remove it. Shouldn't be. I'm not going to put so much effort on this because it's so, so far and you can barely see them in any any case. So let's just keep it like that. And next would be doing the gradients. And I'm just going to use one to the sky, holding the shift key so that the line will be straight. And there is already some values here. So let's um, reset that, holding the option key. And you can see that this one turns into reset. And let's de-ace it, something like that. And reduce a little bit the exposure. Shouldn't be too much dramatic. Yeah, I think it's nice. It goes very, very nicely with the darker sky with this big shadow area. Um, it combines nicely in my opinion. Next would be a radial for fake sun glow from this side because the light comes from that part. You can see it very very clearly on these mountains. So let's zoom out a little bit and take the radial filter making it like a big nice circle, invert it so that it's only affecting inside and again we need to reset. We can also double click each value to reset but it's faster to just to do the reset over there. So let's crank the blacks so that it's like something like A's and we can also take down the A's a little bit and let's give it some warm tone yeah it really goes nicely in this area like um, morning glow or sunset it's gonna be both and let's try to give it also a, a more tint but now this is too much so let's Turn it out. And yeah, it gives a very, very nice impact on the frame. We can also see it in smaller version here, which is a very nice way to take some impression of what is going on in the global frame. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. Okay, uh, next would be the, the brush and we are going to do some adjustments to the, the blacks and the whites and I want to paint all the way in the road so that it will be have more um, glossy uh, wet look. It already looks like wet but let's uh, emphasize that. 
and reset and just take some value now like uh, cranking up the highlights and the whites and I'm using a Wacom tablet so it's way easier we can start with a big brush and just do something like that and make it smaller and smaller as long as you go inside the frame and once you're pretty close let's zoom in yeah we don't need too much to walk on the road it's something to be accurate i'm not going to make it very very impact and we can see already that it does something not so much very subtle we can try and play with the values now and i'm not using the exposure because if we we'll use the exposure itself it will do a massive ramp up of everything the blacks the whites it will be, looks very unnatural and by just cranking up the highlights and the whites it's only affecting this range and it's making everything way more balanced way more controlled and it's way better like that and it's really really helping to lead the eye into the frame especially in these areas it's like a continuous line that you your imagination kicks in and and you know connect the lines this is really really good so the next uh, adjustment brush would be to highlight these areas in the mountains this will create more depth and another layer for the eye to venture to um, let's target the whites and do some temperature ramping so let's zoom in and we can start in this area and you can see how immediately it affects very nicely only the the whites the wider areas and you don't need to be precise at all because we are targeting only specific values a specific range and once we zoom out you will see that it's really really give a very very nice look over there in the background another place for the eye to hang this on and just naturally drawn to that place yeah and in general it's really nice all these adjustments that are non-destructive and you can always amend them change them delete the specific uh, adjustment it's very dynamic and uh, easy to use and you can see very very nicely the, the difference okay so the next brush would be to target the blacks and we will just search for uh, black areas that we want to emphasis so let's drop a bit the shadows and the blacks and we can start actually in here on this rocky stuff yeah a little bit in here Yeah. and by doing that we are creating more contrast obviously but separation between the layers like we have bright area here and then dark area and then and again a bright area so scale separation and depth like more three-dimensional look and I find it very important and appealing 
in many of the photos that I edit. You can try and zoom in a little bit in here. Take the brush a little bit bigger. Yeah. And all these very small, mild adjustments accumulate to something big eventually. And you will see it very, very clearly once I zoom out and toggle it, the effect. And we'll do the same in a second for the highlights too. Yeah. So we really, really give nice look to our frame. So the next one will be exactly the opposite. We will reset with the option key and crank up the whites and the highlights. And let's start with brightening a little bit the grass in here. It's like a leading line by itself. Yeah. And this patch here. I use the square buckets to change my brush size very, very quickly. So my left hand is on the Wacom tablet with the pen and my right hand is on the buckets and also tend to use the space key to toggle the, the pan tool. So for me it's very convenient. And yes, I am left-handed. I think we need to crank up more the whites. Yeah. Let's see if the lights also do something to us. Yeah, especially in this area, you can see that. Yeah, let's do it all the way up. This looks nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This looks nice. Maybe a little bit in here, more. And this is like a leading line to the frame. We can go back actually to the blacks and paint a little bit in here for more separation. The dark area, bright area, again dark area. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Oh, here is something that I missed. And this this part in here. If you know how to zoom to my mouse cursor, let me know. It will be nice instead of panning all the time. Yeah, this part. This. Yeah, way better. Cool. So this conclude um the edits that i done in lightroom the next step would be to remove these yellow poles in photoshop okay so we are in photoshop i right click on the photo and chose edit in photoshop and this is the picture from the before 
and we can do command J to duplicate our background layer so that what we do here will be non-destructive and we can always uh, go back. I use the patch tool and let's zoom in a little bit. Yeah. And we can start by doing some selection like that and then edit, fill and choose content aware. Hit OK and boom. So why didn't I just choose all of it altogether? It's because Photoshop not always being able to understand that um, there is elements below below it and it will be more efficient to do um, the art parts first and then continue with the part that there is no much of content behind it. And for the sake of the future fields, I'm going to hit the Shift F5. Yeah. And we can still see some smooth artifacts, but once we zoom out, uh, it will be something that we don't really see. And let's zoom out. So there is some green tint, maybe it's been using this part. So what we can do is actually using the stamp tool instead, using something big with one opacity and it needs to be very soft, 0% hardness. And we will use the option key to select and click. And now you can see that we are sampling that part and we can do a few strokes like that and it is gone. Okay, so this is the second yellow pole and it's more complex, it's farther in the frame. It means that we have everything smaller, it's more dense and Photoshop usually struggles with that. I'm going to change this to content aware instead of normal or patch tool and this time we will select this area and let's try to actually grab it take some sample from here oh, it looks really really nice yeah and from here not so great Sometimes we need to do it a few times to get the proper results. Yeah. Wait. And I think we will need to paint uh, this part because it's impossible to find the proper part here but let's see what we can get yeah now grab something from here command C command V and then let's move it I cannot see that actually okay so it's over there one and let's command T and rotate it and we can try to skew it into place okay and let's confirm so it looks not so bad, also not so good. It's too thick. Yeah. Let's apply a mask. Take the brush. And 
black is to turn off a mask and white is to turn on. So we will keep it as black. Let's zoom in a little bit and wash out this area. And again, I'm using a very, very soft and smooth wash. You see how it's nicely blends in and zoom out. And I think from this part, you cannot tell that it was there. And now we can command E to merge the layers. So there you have it. This is the final result. We have uh, balanced the sky, added some uh, artificial light from the right side. We have removed some distracting elements in this frame like the yellow poles and the, some buildings in the background and we have used the brush uh, pretty intensive here in this frame to build layers and contrast uh, in the layers that we want to and the final result is pretty awesome I do hope you like it and do not forget to like and subscribe leave comments below and see you in the next episode.